Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver, my name is Helmut. Today we go on to the EcoDriver loop to find out about the consumption of the Peugeot E2008. I'll show you how to drive this nice EV as efficiently as possible. We have a 100 kilowatt electric motor and a 50 kilowatt hours gross 46 kilowatt hours net battery. Underlain weight is 1583 kilograms, 3483 pounds. This car is basically technically identical to the E208, the Citroën EC4, which I've already tested a couple of weeks ago, and the Opel or Vauxhall Corsa E, as this is all part of the Stellantis group. For all new viewers on my channel, I'll show you the loop we're doing. We start in the southern outskirts of Innsbruck, go out of town for about two kilometers, then we have a climb which elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet, followed by rolling hills, a descent, a mixed road with speeds between 30 and 100 kilometers per hour, 20 to 62 miles per hour, motorway, and at the end, 18 kilometers, 11 miles of city traffic. After every section, we check the overall and sectoral consumption, and at the end, we analyze the whole trip. The cameras will be on all the time to A, show how I am I driving to achieve the consumption, and B, to prove that there is no need to go extra slow to be efficient. Outside temperature is around 25 degrees Celsius, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. So the AC is working and as we have extraordinarily nice weather today, I hope you enjoy this trip, the scenery and my advice. Thirty-one point eight kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end of the climb. We are now approaching the hills, and there, the most efficient way of driving an EV, in fact every vehicle, is to make best use of the change of gradient and gravity. Imagine, just like on a roller coaster, build up some speed on the way down, of course within the legal limits, and take this momentum into the next flat or uphill section. And on the way up, avoid maintaining the speed at all costs or even accelerating. No problem to reduce the speed by a couple of kilometers per hour or miles per hour. You can re-accelerate when it flattens or go da goes downhill. This saves you quite some energy. This car does not coast when you take your foot off the accelerator, so it requires a bit of a sensitive foot to keep the car rolling, which is a more efficient way of driving than accelerating and then braking. Even if the car regenerates some energy, but it doesn't regenerate enough to compensate for the energy you have already used. That's why, personally, I prefer cars which truly coast over those constant regenerators. Twenty-two point seven kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers at the end of the hills. Now we are descending to our starting altitude. With this very car and all EVs and also hybrids with, let's say, moderate power output—in this case, hundred kilowatt peak power—you 
you have to keep in mind that you have at best 85 to 90 kilowatts for electric braking and this isn't really much especially from higher speeds we have the power meter on the right side of the dashboard and if during braking the pointer hits the bottom of the charge section we have reached the maximum capacity of regeneration if this maximum is exceeded the mechanical brakes are used and we lose potential energy for charging the batteries and therefore increase consumption and reduce the range we have two flat sections on this circa six kilometer descent and there it's important to enter those flat bits with enough momentum to avoid the use of additional energy. Well, we were a bit unlucky with the vehicles in front of us, the slow truck and the black Volvo, whose driver obviously has not the slightest clue about physics, or simply doesn't care, so we couldn't go down as efficient as I hoped. Anyway, 11.2 kWh per 100 km after the descent. As we are now pretty much on the same altitude as the start of our trip, this gives us already a good indication of where we might end up consumption-wise. You might have noticed that I barely used the B mode. I almost always stayed in D. Well, it doesn't make any difference for the region whether we are brake with the gear selector in B or with the brake pedal. Now we are coming onto the mixed road section with speed limits between 30 and 100 km per hour, 20 to 62 miles per hour. Let's just hope that we don't have more sleeping vehicle movers in front of us and that we can go as efficiently as we would like to. Eleven point two kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers after the mixed road section, exactly the same as we had at the beginning of it. We are now coming onto the motorway, and here we have a speed limit of hundred kilometers per hour as per local law, compared to the usual hundred and thirty kilometers per hour in Austria. Exempt from this are EVs, such as we have one. However, for the reasons of comparability and economy, I stick to the hundred. And to be honest, most times you can't even go faster than 100 and 110 on this stretch of the motorway anyway, due to the heavy traffic. Well, as expected, even if we wanted to go the allowed 130 km per hour, we wouldn't be any faster as for the heavy traffic and cars not going faster than 100 to 105 km per hour on the left lane. 12.5 kWh per 100 km is what the dashboard says after the motorway. 
Now we're coming on to our final section of the day, city traffic. Here it's important to keep the car in motion and avoid braking. But, 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 but this is an EV and it regenerates and therefore it doesn't matter if we brake a lot. Yeah, crap like this I hear all the time, even from car salesmen or quote unquote motor journalists. Yes, an EV regenerates some energy when you brake, but never enough to make up for what you have used beforehand to reach or maintain that speed or afterwards to re-accelerate. Otherwise we would have a perpetual mobile. In the best case you get back 40 to 45 percent and if you take a ride in the city with lots of stop and go we normally get an average region rate of maybe 35 percent. So it's always better not to brake than to brake. Therefore it's recommended to apply a driving style where you look ahead, read the road, anticipate what other road users will be doing, check traffic lights from where you head and avoid unnecessary changes of speed. Of course, before you crash into something or somebody, you brake. But in general, try to avoid it. We are now coming to the end of this consumption test with the Peugeot E2008 on the Eco Travel Loop. And when I park the car in here, we see 12.1 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Okay, and now the details. Okay, now let's have a look at the detailed overall and sectoral consumption. It's quite a hmm, dull result. And I mean that not in a disrespectful way. It was what to expect throughout, around 11 kWh per 100 km on the mixed roads and in the city. It's just a solid EV for everyday use. Here we have the table with all the EVs I've tested so far and the E2008 is ta-da, bang on in midfield. This table is sorted by the weight specific consumption, that's the column on the far right, and it's basically identical to its cousin, the Citroën EC4. I know it sounds really dull, but there's nothing in this result that stands out, neither positive nor negative. Uh, so the most interesting finding today might well be that, that this is just a good, solid EV 
which doesn't surprise you in any way and that's nothing bad if you're not looking for surprises. And when you want to see how the almost identical Citroen EZ4 has performed on the EcoTravel loop, you'll find this video here. And down here you can click on my video with the five general tips of how to drive EVs more efficiently. And if you generally like what I'm doing, feel free to subscribe to this channel. And if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss any new video. That's it for the Peugeot E2008. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.